Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Jody. I'm the pastor of Oasis Church and we are so glad that you're with us today. Uh, today's kind of a special day. We, as you know, um, meet at Isaac Newton Christian Academy. Uh, each week they are incredible hosts to us. We're so blessed to be able to uh, gather in person there and connect you online as well at 9.30 every Sunday morning. But uh, this is one date out of the year. There were two total uh, that we were not able to uh, utilize the space at the Patriot Center at Isaac Newton Christian Academy. And so we're coming to you from, from my house too. Uh, so I'm glad to be joining you in your home and welcome into our home as we gather for worship this morning uh, with Oasis Church. So glad that you are with us. <clears throat> if you would just take a moment and uh, uh, here are a couple of things that you'll want to know about uh, as we head into the next few weeks, which are really exciting. Uh, we're starting a new uh, set of Oasis communities. Those are small groups here in Oasis Church where we are going to utilize a resource called Experiencing God. If you've wondered how to know and discern God's will, this is a study that's all about that. How do we know what God wants us to do? If you are wondering that question, the Experiencing God small groups, Oasis communities are for you. And so we would love to tell you more about it and find out what time would work for you. Um, we are hoping to offer in-person and uh, online uh, uh, opportunities for people to connect weekly as we study that um, together. So if you are interested in that experience in God's study, you can go to our website as you check in and indicate that interest on our check-in uh, form. Also, we have a mission trip coming up this summer, and we can't wait to tell people about it. We are going to be having an informational session for that in a few weeks, and so we'll make sure to get you information about it. But if you want to know more, check that on the connection card there on our website as well, if you would. And actually, <clears throat> let me just take you there for a minute. So you just go to uh, oasisfamily.org, so you can see it there on the screen. And when you get there, um, you'll just go down there toward the bottom where uh, there's that tab that uh, says uh, welcome and we're glad that you're with us. Click here. So you click on that and then you just simply fill out that form. And uh, if you scroll down a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, you can indicate that you're interested in uh, being a part of um, an adult oasis uh, community as a small group or experiencing God. That's the same thing essentially as we start those or the high school mission and actually adult mission trip too. It's going to be for students and for families and we would love to have you just indicate your interest and we will get you more information about that. So pretty exciting, uh, all these things that are coming up. Also, in just a couple of weeks, we have a guest uh, preacher with us. So I'm really uh, glad that we're going to be having uh, some people come uh, and join us uh, for a Sunday and share God's word with us from their heart. And, and so next week, we'll be back at Isaac Newton Christian Academy, as we will every other week. And, and then in two weeks, a special guest uh, preacher with us. If it's your heart's desire to be connected in Oasis Church, it's our prayer that you would be. And if you want to know um, more about uh, what we're about, again, indicate that on our website. You can also just send a message to the Oasis Church Facebook page. If, if you've liked that yet, if you haven't, go ahead and do that. And we would love to uh, tell you anything uh, you're wondering about in regard to Oasis Church. Also, if you would like to partner with us financially, we'd like to give people an opportunity to give back to God out of the abundance that he's given you. And so if you'd like to do that, you can do that on our website, or you can text 84321 um, and uh, put in the amount, and then it'll just walk you through a very simple process. So if you're interested in partnering with us in that way, we want to help people know, love, and follow Jesus and experience uh, abundant life in him. And so if that's just kind of right up your alley, uh, please consider joining us in that uh, pursuit together. So with that, let's pray together as we begin our time of worship. Lord God, thank you for technology first and the people who know how to use it. Um, we're so blessed, God, and uh, we're thankful to be able to gather together in this way this Sunday morning. Here in Iowa, it's snowy, or at least in eastern Iowa, and we're thankful for uh, just that refreshing snow and a beautiful day. And, and I ask, Lord, that today you would refresh us. 
that you would renew us and, and help us and, and lead us, God. We need to hear from you today. We need direction. We need encouragement from you, God. We need to be reminded of your love and your grace and your mercy. So I ask that this time would be, be like that. Uh, lead us now as we worship you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are going to worship together, so there's a really beautiful song. It's all about you, and that's really what we're about here at Oasis Church. Uh, so worship with us, if you would. All right. Well, kids, it's time for the children's message. So it's time for you to gather closer to the TV, if you would. And I, I believe this uh, children's message is going to be for parents as well. Um, so hopefully you're gathering, kids. I do want to just say as you're gathering, um, again, make sure you have some paper and some pens, markers, because I'm going to be drawing something later. I know, kind of scary. And I would love for you to uh, pick up something from that drawing and try to create it on your own. It doesn't have to be the whole thing, but anyway, that might be fun. So, hey, it's a new year, right? I mean, I know it's almost the end of January, but it's still a new year. And we found this video that I think uh, speaks directly to 
us in the midst of a new year here in 2021. It's a look into the future, and I think you're going to appreciate it as we think about what God is up to. So check this out. Running late for curfew? What are you doing? I'm making a late night sandwich like your grandma doesn't like me to. <laughs> your secret's safe with me. Mm -hmm. Same. So how was your party? Lame. I don't get what's so special about New Year's. Oh, what's special about New Year's? Yeah, I mean, you stay up late, everyone says, Happy New Year, and then a ball drops. Let me tell you something. I remember a year uh, you were just born. It was a very difficult year. You may not believe this, but there was no toilet paper to be found anywhere. Gross. Well, that wasn't even the half of it. People couldn't shake hands. They couldn't hug. You didn't want to leave your house or you're afraid you might get sick. And masks. Everyone was wearing masks everywhere. You couldn't tell if somebody was smiling or frowning. That sounds weird. You, you couldn't go visit with family, not even at the, the holidays, you know. Then what happened? Well, that's the best part. Then God got us through it, just like he always does. That's why I like new. See, God says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. New, my dear, gives us a, a different perspective on things. Like on toilet paper, I guess. <laughs> I mean, just because it's new doesn't mean it's going to be good. You're right. You're right. That is why we hold on to the words of Jesus, who said, uh, in this world you will have troubles, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That, boop, is why we celebrate new. Grandpa, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Do you want him or turkey? All right, well, God is doing a new thing and so blessed that we get to do this, uh, be a part of what he's doing uh, together as Oasis Church. Well, we're going to move into the um, message uh, today, and so I would ask that you would pray with me as we begin our time uh, in God's Word together. Let's pray. Lord, um, we're going to be digging into Philippians, and I ask that you would deliver to us a message that, that we need to hear. God, that it would come from your heart um, to our ears, and that we wouldn't be um, the same afterwards, God, that you would do a work here a new thing uh, in and among us uh, that we would experience more of you. Lead us now in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, growing has its challenges. Just ask a middle schooler. I mean, so much growing happens in those middle school years. So many things um, mentally, emotionally, uh, psychologically, physically. I mean, there are middle schoolers who grow three inches in a, in a matter of months, right? And that can be exceedingly challenging. There can be growing pains. Uh, there can be struggles in the midst of that. But there's still a lot more growth to be had. Uh, many middle schoolers, high schoolers, often wear the same size shoes as their parents. But it doesn't mean that they're ready to go out completely on their own and navigate the realities of life in the world um, without anyone else and there's still need for growth. By the way, middle schoolers, high schoolers, we love you in Oasis Church, and we don't believe that you need to wait until being an adult to be a vital part of the body of Christ in Oasis Church. So I want you to hear that. I want you to know that. I want you to know that we have a lot to learn from you, and my prayer is that as you connect here in Oasis Church, you know that there's some really great things for you to grow in as you continue to mature. You know, I think about influencers and how important they are 
in the lives of young people in particular. To have healthy influencers in your life, middle school, high schoolers, is so important. Kids, that's you too. But that's the same thing with us as adults. If we don't have healthy influencers in our lives, that's gonna impact our growth. On the flip side, if we have healthy influencers, people who are investing in us, helping us grow, that's huge for our growth. In our relationship with God, we grow. And that's what we're talking about today. In our relationship with God, we, we grow. We're in this series um, on Philippians 1. It's called Relationships. Simple, clear, because when it comes down to it, so much of life is about relationships. And we are in Philippians chapter 1. And so if you have your Bibles, I'd encourage you to open to Philippians chapter 1. Now, this is a letter that's written to the Christians in a city called Philippi. It's in Macedonia. It's now in northern Greece. That's um, where Philippi is, this city. The Philippians, like we are Iowans, if you live in Iowa. I know we have people from all over the world, actually, that are joining us this morning. So wherever you're from, that's kind of your title. Well, the Philippians have a close relationship with Paul. They have a tight-knit relationship. Paul had been there some time before, visited Philippi, traveled there, and talked about Jesus. Talked about Jesus being the Messiah. He talked about who Jesus was, what he was like, what his life was like, his teaching was like, his death and his resurrection. He communicated with the people of Philippi that God loved them so much. And he communicated God's heart to them so much so that they responded to that good news, that proclamation of who God is. They responded and they, they gathered together in community. They became the very first church in the continent of what we know as Europe now, in that city of Philippi. Well, Paul goes on his way and he continues to travel and he be, continues to be very bold about who Jesus is, which was met with resistance. It was a threat to the establishment. It was a threat to uh, even the Roman government. And it landed Paul in a whole lot of trouble often. In fact, he's in prison as he writes this letter to the Philippians. He is in prison, but you'll know that the book of Philippians, like the main theme, is joy. I mean, this guy has joy no matter the circumstances. And so he's in prison, and he's writing this letter to the people of Philippi, and he wants to express his heart for them. He wants them to know uh, how much he cares for them. And so we've been, in the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the first few verses of Philippians. We're going to take a little more, another chunk on of Philippians chapter 1. So let's start at the top because, hey, we're only uh, seven verses into Philippians chapter one. And let's, let's see about Paul's heart in his relationship with them. And then today we're going to take another step in knowing that in a relationship with God, we grow. So Philippians one, Paul and Timothy are writing this letter to the Philippians. They're servants of Christ Jesus, he says. That's what they want to be, servants to Christ Jesus. That's their identity. He says this, To all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi, with the overseers and deacons, and then a greeting, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I love that greeting. And then he says, verse 3, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It's right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. We talked about that last week, that closeness that he refers to. I, I hold you in my heart for you are all partakers with me of grace. We come together, not because we've got stuff together, but because we're partakers together in the grace of God. We're joined together, partakers together in grace, both in my imprisonment, Paul says, and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. All right, here's the next section we're digging into today. For God is my witness, 
how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. If you think about the court of law and the role of a witness, it's to tell the truth. It's to confirm what is true. And Paul calls on the most incredible witness there is, God himself. He says, for God is my witness. This is how I feel. I'm telling you all the truth. You need to know that as God is my witness, who knows all things, as God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. That relationship that Paul has with the Philippians, it's not um, an affection that is founded in Paul himself. He says it's like the affection of Jesus, which is like crazy. It's phenomenal. It's so important. It's so powerful. And he says, that's the kind of affection I have for you as I think about you, Philippian Christians. I, um, I have this affection, and it's, it's like founded in Christ Jesus, that kind of powerful, um, that powerful affection. And then verse 9, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. There's a lot there. Let's, uh, let's take a closer look at it. So in a relationship with God, we grow. We're establishing that here together. And what else grows? Paul says love grows. He says, as he talks to God about them, as he dialogues with God about him, by the way, prayer is just conversation with God. It's like, as you talk to a friend, it's just conversation. So as I talk to God about you, he says, this is what I pray about. I pray that your love may abound more and more. Paul tells them that he wants that love in them to abound. What does the word abound mean? Abound means to exceed a fixed number or measure. Exceeding a certain, like if you think of a container that contains a certain amount of something, this, is, this goes over and above the measure of that container. Well, I grew up just a few blocks from the Cedar River in Waverly, Iowa, just a few blocks from the Cedar River, and um, as I grew up, I understood, to some degree, the power of that river. I was attentive to it, but it wasn't until 2008, when I lived here in Cedar Rapids, that I learned a new understanding of the power of a river. You lived in Cedar Rapids in 2008 or in eastern Iowa. Um, you know, you have a picture in your mind of the power of a river. And as Paul talks about this abound in the Greek, um, I was reading from a scholar this week that said that word abound, that reference that Paul makes, he likens it to a word um, like abounds like a, like a flood, um, like a flood time river. Think about the power of a flood time river and it's potentially over its banks, right? Now, wouldn't it be something if our love, that's what Paul's talking about. He wants that to abound more and more. What if our love was so powerful, it, like that river? I mean, it's just like, it is, and it's abounding, and not just abounding, but more and more. The tagline of uh, Oasis Church, I guess for lack of a better phrase, is experience abundant life. That word abundant from John 10.10 10 is the same foundational word that we read here in Philippians about abounding. For your love to abound, that it would be in abundance. All right, that it would abound, that it would, that it would be powerful, that it would be, I mean, you can just picture the energy of that. Wouldn't it be something if our love was overflowing like that? And that the power of it, it would exceed our own personal capacity. And then it wouldn't just abound, but it would abound more and more. But that river has to be guided. Because in 2008, we saw a powerful river and the lack of some guidance for that water. We saw what happened as that happened. There was, there was disaster. It was destructive. And so Paul says, 
<laughs> I want your love to abound more and more. And then uh, verse 9, more and more with knowledge and all discernment. I think about down by uh, General Mills. Now, since 2008, they've created structures, walls, that will provide guidance for the river if and when a flood like 2008 would uh, come upon us. The water will be powerful, but it will be guided. And so I want to think about that picture for a moment. What is it guided by? Paul says, I want, as I pray for you, I want that love to, to have knowledge and all discernment. Okay, let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, I want to tell you first uh, a personal story that I'm not proud of, but I think it's that picture uh, a little bit. So when I was in college, I came to know Jesus in a personal way like I hadn't before. I mean, it was a really, it was kind of a new phase in my relationship with God, which is, by the way, very important. Uh, we need to continue to experience new things about who God is. And in college, that was a time for me. Um, where I was learning and growing and connected and community and super passionate about Jesus. I was a camp counselor at a camp up uh, by Okaboji. And while I was there, I was in this community where we were, we were preparing to be camp counselors. And so we had two weeks of training together where we learned and studied God's word and had tons of fun together and laughed so hard. And one of the things we would do together, which is important in a Christian community, is pray together. We would pray together a lot. Well, one uh, day I noticed that there was another camp counselor um, in a group in which I was praying with, and I noticed that her eyes were open while she was praying. Well, I was so zealous and so passionate in my uh, love for Jesus that I thought for sure I knew the right way to pray, which would be to close your eyes. And so I thought, man, I wonder what's going on with her. Like, why is she praying with her eyes open? And I noticed it on more than one occasion. So much so did it bother me that I went to one of our leaders to sort of express a concern for her, like maybe she doesn't know Jesus. Like maybe she, I mean, this is kind of, that's not good. I mean, if she's going to be a camp counselor and lead people into a relationship with Jesus, maybe that's not a good thing. And um, graciously, the person I talked with uh, just listened to my concern. And um, well, wow, many years later, I realized a couple of things about that situation. One is that, um, uh, that I had some arrogance, some spiritual arrogance in me. Like I knew kind of how you were supposed to pray. And if you weren't praying with your eyes closed, I mean, you could be distracted and that's really a problem, right? So my concern for her had to be with her having her eyes closed. But um, so, and by the way, I've learned and you should know too, you can talk with God with your eyes open. In fact, it's probably a good idea. Like if you're driving a car or you're riding your bike, there's lots of contexts in which praying with your eyes open is the very best thing to do. Um, it can be helpful for us to, to focus, but in many instances, praying with your eyes open is a good idea. But two, obviously that gal wasn't the only one praying with her eyes open. I mean, how did I know she was praying with her eyes open? Obviously my eyes were open, okay? I had this love for Jesus. It was abounding. I was so excited about him, so much so that it needed some guidance, okay? needed some help. <laughs> it needed some, some boundaries. And what is it that Paul's talking about? What are those boundaries? Well, he says two things in very specific um, note. He says, knowledge and all discernment. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to actually switch analogies to the tree. Now, last week, um, and as you've seen in our uh, relationships logo, we've got some beautiful, huge trees in our image of relationships. And so let's go back to the tree for a moment. And, uh, and how is it that a tree grows? So I'm gonna actually, this is the place where I'm gonna do some artwork, which, uh, you know, I'm no Bob Ross, I'll tell you that much right now. Um, in fact, my apologies to all of you who do really appreciate Bob Ross. We and our family really do like Bob Ross a lot. I wanna talk about the picture of a tree, a young tree, okay, that's growing. Let's see what I can do here. Oh, let's see, my marker isn't working as well as I want it to. I guess it's that, the texture on our walls. Okay, all right, so we got a tree here, and I think we need some grass. All right, all right, we got some grass. <laughs> and we have roots to the tree, okay? And uh, these roots are really important because they go down deep 
and they help nurture this very young tree, okay? Um, and what is it that nurtures this young tree? It's God, all right? Oh, I hope you can read that, okay? And also, I would say God's love, all right? His incredible love is at the root of a relationship with God that Paul invites us into. Okay, so God's love, and in that, if we are the tree, we are growing. And I think about um, a young tree as it grows, all right? And what's happening as it grows? All right, grow in here. All right, it's growing, it's becoming healthier, and that's a really important part of the tree. And Paul talks about love abounding. As you grow in a relationship with God, he says, I want your love to abound as you grow. I want your love to abound. And we'll write love abounds here. Abounds. And not just a little. He says more and more. Picture that river, right? The power of it. Paul says, I want it to uh, abound in you as it grows. And as it grows, this young tree, we'll just try... I apologize, I'm not that great of an artist here. As it grows, it's important that it's guided here. I guess I better, kind of a young tree here. It's probably kind of loud there for you. All right, we have a new tree in our front yard. It's a couple of years old. And one of the things that happened when we had that tree planted was that thankfully they put some um, guides, right, around that tree and put a stake in the ground, actually went deep into the ground. So it's going to help. Now, it does, they don't just put it on one side. All right, they put it on both sides so that if the wind hits, which we experienced here recently, um, and as it grows, it has some support. Now, if I think about what Paul is talking about in this passage, what is it that's going to help guide that love as it abounds? He says knowledge. What's he talking about here? That it abounds with knowledge. Now, this isn't just like an intellectual knowledge. This is a knowledge that's experiential. All right, where it's experiential. Let's spell that right. I don't think I did. Experiential. There you go. It's experiential knowledge of what? Of God's word. The word that Paul chooses here talks about knowledge of God's word, the Bible. It's good for us to know the Bible, but it's not just like knowing it like you studied it in a class. It's about experiencing it. It's, it's about looking at it, reading it, and applying it into real life. It's so critical that as your love abounds, that in it, with it, guiding it is knowledge of God's word. Otherwise, like me, I can't, you know, it can get off track. I had some learning, some growing to do, and in a relationship with God, we grow. And one of the ways he helps us grow is to dig into his word and to see what it's about and not just read it to know it, to memorize it even, but to apply it to our lives, to experience something. It's kind of like forgiveness, Okay, forgiveness. You can know about the concept of forgiveness, that it's a good idea, but it's not until your capacity to uh, forgive is tested that you start experiencing it. Perhaps you've been through a time that's been really challenging, really difficult, really, really hard, and you needed to forgive someone. And you needed to work through the pain, the labor it was to forgive. It's after some of that experience that you have that you start to have a deeper understanding of how to love and apply God's word to a situation. You could say, well, the Bible says we should forgive. Good idea, huh? But it's when we work the muscles. Did you know, by the way, that, um, that our muscles, you know this, I'm sure, grow as we use them. Bones are like that too. Our bone density gets stronger as we put pressure on our bones and our muscles. It's why astronauts, when they come back from being uh, in microgravity, it's why their bone density becomes less because they haven't had that stress on it. 
But when, and actually tennis players, um, bone mass increases on their dominant side of their arm and their leg as they work those, not just muscles, but as they work that part of their body. Same thing for us when we apply God's word, when we, when we, when we think about it, when we apply, when we experience God's word. And that's going to help advise us as our love abounds more and more. And there's another thing kind of like that helps bring clarity, distinction, um, focus to our love as it abounds. And what does it say in verse 9? It's knowledge and it's all discernment. Discernment. And we could talk a long time for about discernment here. Uh, but what is that? Discerning something. I think I'm going to come back over here. Uh, discerning something is a really important part of knowing how to love well. I mean, you've got to be perceptive in what it is that God is calling you to do or wanting you to do in a particular situation. Being perceptive about a situation is a really critical piece. Knowing and understanding context, being gentle and wise in our words, even when we know the right thing, how we go about administering that is really important. So discernment and experiential knowledge of God's word help advise us in how to love, how our love abounds more and more. I want to give you an example of actually both of those things, uh, exercising knowledge based on experience and, and communicating in a way that's helpful. And Jesus, by the way, walked the perfect line of that. I wish we could all be like that because we can be hurtful in our guidance. Um, we can be hurtful in our words or in our actions as we try to bring about the best. And so we need to ask God to, to give us wisdom and how to do that. Um, well, I want to tell you a little bit more about my coworker, Larry. Larry is um, retired. He works part-time in our company that I work for. And Larry uh, is wise. Okay, his wisdom is based on experience. Lots and lots of experience, particularly in working with our clients. Lots of years, lots of hours, lots of investment in uh, connecting with uh, people uh, in our line of work in, as a roof consultant. But one of the things that I think is exceptional about Larry, even with all of the knowledge that he has, is that he, um, he's super excited about new ideas. He's excited about uh, championing new thinking or younger people as they're growing and learning more. He loves to get behind that and is excited about that. Uh, for them. And I just love that. I think that's a really cool picture of what I was just trying to illustrate for you. That one of the pieces uh, about our relationship with, with each other, and as our love abounds more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, one of the things that's important, and Larry shows this, um, is having discernment, knowing the right time, the right way to communicate love and um, encouragement and also that experiential knowledge. Now, Paul isn't talking about roof consulting. <laughs> He's talking about love and communicating that love uh, uh, as we live life. And that's one of his prayers for the people of Philippi, that your love would abound more and more, and that it would be guided with knowledge, experiential knowledge of God's word, and all discernment. Why? So that you may approve what is excellent that as you test how to live life, how to navigate situations, how to uh, forgive when we need, how, how, to, how to bring support, how to bring correction, how to parent your kids, how to work and, and, and be effective in the, the way you spend your time, you name it. Paul says, as your love abounds more and more with all knowledge and discernment, you will then be able to approve what is excellent. And so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I think I'm going to need somebody to help me as a camera person because we're going to come back over to our image of the tree that's growing, as you see. And this tree that's growing is supported as, the lo as love is abounding by experiential knowledge of God's word 
and discernment. It continues to grow. And Paul says, I want this to happen. Okay, I want this to be the case for you um, because I want you to be pure and blameless, pure and blameless for the day of Christ Jesus. Okay, wait a minute, Paul. How am I going to be pure and blameless? I cannot do that on my own. And that's the gospel message, okay? That's the reality of who Jesus is. That he doesn't say, hey, would you figure that out? I mean, he knows us better than that. But as love abounds more and more in knowing God's word and discerning how he would like for us to love, we are invited into pursuing Jesus, who is the definition, the very definition of pure and blameless. And he doesn't leave us alone as we try to make sense of how to do that. In fact, he invites us into a relationship where we're continually growing to know more of his heart for people and how we ought to live our lives. That you might be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness. Cannot Okay, actually, we're continuing to grow. So this tree, this young tree, is continuing to grow. Larger, broader limbs, stronger, kind of like muscles or bones as they uh, experience pressure. It's pure and blameless, but then there's fruit. And not just a little fruit, okay? If this is an apple tree, we're talking about fruit that's abounding, that is plentiful. Paul says that it's fruit, what does he say exactly? He says that we'd be filled. If you picture that river that's filled and overflowing, that we would be filled with the fruit of righteousness. Now, righteousness, a state of being right and pure. How is it that that comes to be by the grace of God? The fruit isn't grown because of us. The fruit nourished by the roots and up through the system of the tree that God is growing is how that fruit abounds, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Jesus is our only hope when it comes to fruitful living. Jesus, and I guess most beautifully pictured in the cross, an empty cross, mind you, we are founded and rooted in Jesus Christ, and in that we have hope, that we might be filled with the fruit of righteousness, righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. For why? For the glory and praise of God. We're invited to be connected at the root with God as he grows us, that we might show other people his incredible love for them, pure and blameless, pointing them to him, that they might know and experience abundant life, abounding love, the incredible grace of God that's not rooted in ourselves, but is firmly rooted in who God is and in a relationship with him. In a relationship with God, we grow. So I want to invite you to take a next step, just one step, in growing in a relationship with God, that your love may abound more and more in him. And that's, that's really about connecting with him in a relationship. <clears throat> and then he'll do the fruit uh, growing. He'll be the one who provides uh, what we need and, and wisdom and discernment as we grow in his word. How can we do that? I want you to think this week about a practical way, one little way, one step, that you can take to grow in your relationship with God or actually just to connect in a relationship with him because a relationship with him in him we grow and so I want to invite you to think about one thing that you could do to grow this week maybe it's some time in his word maybe it's uh, setting a timer um, maybe setting your alarm a little bit early so that you can wake up and spend a little bit of time with him Open up his word. Philippians is a really place, great place to go. Read it slowly. Try to take in. Ask God to help you have wisdom. Another way is uh, joining us for Experiencing God, this new uh, Oasis communities uh, that are starting here in February. Sign up. Say you're interested. That's a really great way to grow and abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Uh, so think about one practical way. And then think about one person who you could ask to help keep you accountable to that one small piece, one small thing that you can do to, as you grow in a relationship with him. Well, my prayer is that 
as we are together connecting that we, and that's one of the most beautiful pieces, I think, about not this picture, because obviously this picture ain't not beautiful, but if you picture other trees growing alongside one another, okay? Young ones too, by the way. These are not just uh, uh, adults. As we grow together, our roots become intertwined and connected, and we realize that we're not alone in the midst of growing in a relationship with Jesus, reminding each other of his love for us when we mess up. That that's our God. So I pray that that's an encouragement for you today. I know it is for me. I'm so thankful for God and his grace and his mercy and his desire to be in relationship with you and with me. So uh, let's pray together. Father God, um, we ask one for your forgiveness for the ways that we have strayed, kind of gone on our own way. Maybe it's maybe maybe our uh, excitement for you um, is is so powerful uh, that we've kind of forgotten that there's some good. Um, direction that we need from you as we communicate that love. Uh, we pray for greater experiential knowledge that we would dig into your word and that we would, uh, that it would take root in our lives and that we would apply it uh, as we go through our day and that you would keep teaching us, thanks for that, and coaching us and help us to discern uh, the right way to love and the right way to lead others uh, to experience you. Um, right now, we just ask that you come into our hearts and into our lives, that you would, uh, that you would inhabit your people, us individually and your church, Oasis Church and the church worldwide, that through us, you would grow incredible fruit for your kingdom's cause and so that others will know you both for now and for eternity. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to send you on your way with a blessing. So glad that you were with us today. And um, yeah, let's, let's do that. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to watch over you, and within you to give you I'm sorry, beside you to be with you, <laughs> above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen, amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Uh, love you, Oasis Church. And um, yeah, let's keep doing this together. God bless you. Bye-bye.